So welcome to session 22 of Direct Tax to Fourth Semester BCom of Mangalore University. In this particular session, we are going to learn about the rules as to the treating of income as business or profession income. Now, there are certain conditions for treating income as business or profession income. Let's look at the conditions one by one. Now, when we are earning a certain income, we need to first check in which head of income it should be shown. Now, first important condition that we can say, the receiver of the income should be the legal owner of the business. And the business should be carried on by an SSE at least for some time during the relevant previous year. So in the previous session, we had learned that even an isolated transaction with the purpose of objective of earning profit, with the objective of earning profit is taken as business income. So here the receiver of income should be the legal owner of the business. And this business should be carried on at least for some time, maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe one day, whatever may be the case. Now, if an SSE carries on more than one business, suppose if I have got say, a steel business, this side I've got, let's say, cement business. Say this side I've got, say, sand business. So there are multiple businesses. Then aggregate income, income from steel business, income from uh, cement business, income from sand business put together, aggregate income from all businesses shall be considered. Now, when we are aggregating, when we are adding the income that is from different businesses, the expenses incurred on such businesses should be deducted from the income from that business entity. So sometimes the expenses may exceed the income resulting in a loss. Most of the time, the incomes would be more than expenses in a particular business resulting in profit. So we need to aggregate all the profits, aggregate the income of various businesses that an SSE is into. And while aggregating the income, the expenses incurred should be deducted from the income of that business entity. Now, if a loss is incurred after deducting expenses, then such losses can be deducted from income of any other business. So let's say from I, say I'm doing four business. Say from business one, there is a profit of 10,000. From business two, there is a loss of 5,000. From business three, let's say there is a profit of 20,000. From business four, let's say there is a profit of 30,000. So profit of business four, 30, of business three, uh, 20, that is 60,000. Of the first business 10, total 60,000 minus the loss from business to 5,000. So 55,000 would be the aggregate income, aggregate business income. So if from any business, after deducting expenses, there is a loss, then such losses can be deducted from the income of other business. A very important point. Suppose if you are into speculation business, we need to maintain separate book of accounts speculative business transactions must be separated from non-speculative business transaction. Speculation is more so, you know, dealing in stock market for immediate returns. We call day trading as a part of speculation. We call, uh, you know, making, a, making an attempt to uh, make money in the stock market in a very limited time, that is called speculation. So if the SSC is into speculation as well as non-speculation business, separate books of accounts must be maintained as far as speculation business and non-speculation business is concerned. Interestingly, Income Tax Act does not restrict an illegal business, though there are uh, criminal laws that are, you know, that will be available as far as such businesses are concerned. Income Tax Act simply says, income from illegal business is also taxable. It is on par with legal business. However, if there is any loss from an illegal business, such losses cannot be deducted from the profits of a legal business. 
because in the earlier slide we saw if there is a loss from one business such losses can be deducted from the incomes of other business but suppose while doing illegal business and the end result is a loss such losses from illegal business cannot be set off from income or profit of a legal business another very very important point only actual profit should be treated as income from business notional profit anticipated profits are not to be included in the business income because no tax is payable and the business is not yet earned that profit business is only anticipating that it will receive so tax is payable on income which has been received and not which is receivable so no tax is payable on the notional profit and anticipated profits at the same time anticipated losses expenses and provisions for these are not deductible for example provision for doubtful debt provision for discount on debtors these provisions are made out of profit in anticipation that a customer may not pay that we may allow discount to prompt customers that is provision for discount on debtors so anticipated losses and anticipated expenses and provisions for those are not deductible while computing income from business so another very very important rule but if the provision is a statutory provision for example you have to transfer a portion of the profit towards a staff welfare fund say towards gratuity fund of an employee that's a statutory provision then such provision you know amount contributed out of profit is deductible so if the provision is a statutory provision another example that i can give you is the employees compensation fund suppose if the employee meets with an accident at the workplace so they need to be given compensation so if any portion of the profit is transferred to such fund you know such amount is deductible so if the provision is a statutory provision then that provision is deductible important and interesting point some previously allowed as deduction are taxable if recovered during the relevant previous year now if there was bad debts allowed in the previous year the assessing officer was conf was convinced that this much of bad debt will be allowed let's say 10000 bad debt was allowed in the previous year so it was deducted the business income came down you paid less tax now during this year the bad debts of the previous year are recovered since it was allowed as a loss and profits were deducted less tax was paid and since the same bad debt is recovered in this year the bad debts recovered of the earlier year will now be taxable during the relevant previous year now while computing income from business there are general commercial principles you know sometimes accounting principles and those should be taken into account for allowing the deductions but all that we claim as deduction under the accounting principles are not allowed under the taxation rule that's why we say accounting profit is different from taxation profit but the general commercial principles should be taken into account for allowing the deductions now in the course of the business the assets become a little old each year when they are put to use they will be depreciated we say block period of depreciation as applicable now when a particular asset from a block is sold and if the amount recovered from the sale is more than the block value is more than the block value that's one part and suppose second situation suppose if the business is being closed down winding up of the business closing down of the business and at that point of time assets are sold any profit derived from the sale of such assets on the winding up or on the sale you know once it becomes a little old from a certain block and if the block amount amount received is more than the block then those are treated as capital gains or capital losses and not as business profits so profits on sale of assets 
on the winding up of the business suppose a certain asset which is regularly used in the business is sold and the sale value uh, results in recovering the entire value of the block of assets then such difference of the amount excess recovered or profits on sale of assets that is on winding up of the business will be treated as capital gain and will not be treated as business profit so these are some important rules as far as uh, you know treating an income as business income or profession income is concerned thank you very much